Peoria. It's our second quarter final today. The Prairie Central Hawks against the Storm of Bureau Valley. Both teams very similar. Both teams actually almost have the same uniform colors. Mike Lederman along with David Kaplan. David, you're doing yeoman duty today. You're back in the saddle. The greatest is March Madness. Absolutely, and they've gone nuts. And if the first game's any indication, we've got a terrific weekend to continue. Both these teams that we said very, very similar in style. The Prairie Central Hawks against the Storm of Bureau Valley. So everybody's talking about this game as a complete toss-up. Well, this is a game both teams really like to run, but they run with discipline. At least their coaches hope today they'll run with discipline. They want to push the tempo, get good looks, but they have got to take care of the basketball. Let's take a look at the updated brackets as we have them now. Of course, we're going to go through the weekend. Teutopolis with that thrilling overtime victory over Nashville. They move on to face the winner of this game. And, of course, tonight we'll bring you the... Uh, Second quarterfinals, the second match, quarterfinals three and four, finishing up with Riverton and Rock Falls. Rock Falls, of course, the defending champion in this Class A championships. When we take a look at Prairie Central, they are from Fairbury. That is uh, over there on the other side, sort of near Champaign in the central eastern part of the state. The Hawks, they're 25 and 5, and this is a team with very little height. These, these guys send five guys to the boards. They don't send anybody back, so they don't fast break all that much. No, this is a team that if they can push it, they'd like to get themselves some good looks. Uh, Coach Posey says, we want up-tempo with discipline. He was a great shooter in his day, and he gives his guys freedom to shoot the basketball. All right, let's talk about a couple of guys you really should keep your eye on here. First of all, for Prairie Central, you've got to look at Sean McGuire, who really makes this team go, and especially since he stepped up his defense. Well, Sean McGuire can knock down the three. He can take the ball to the basket in transition. He also is a pretty successful shooter from downtown, and he'll dish the ball. Phil Endress of Bureau Valley is a guy that really looks inside first, trying to find his running buddy, Ruben Slock, but he also can make the deep three. And Phil Endress really has got to uh, be on the spot today, the only sophomore in the starting lineups for either team. We'll be back. The starting lineups, the opening tips. Stay right here. Here's the seed at a sold-out Carver Arena down here in Peoria, Illinois, ready for the second half of the first session doubleheader. Joining us, working the sidelines, let's say hello to Steve Schlanger. Steve, good morning, good afternoon, good night. And all those to you guys as well. We've already documented that both these teams have similar records on the season, but Bureau Valley feels they have one additional ingredient, and that is confidence and also momentum. They have won five consecutive regional championships. However, they're coming off their first ever sectional title. They bring that confidence today to the quarters, hoping to face Totopolis tomorrow in the semis. Guys, back to you. Okay, Steve, thank you very much. Both teams getting ready to be introduced. Their benches. Bureau Valley, by the way, is a young school. It's a consolidation from about four or five different areas. Walnut, Manlius, Buta, Western, and Wyanette. And uh, they have uh, really done well in five years to get to state. Their coach is Brad Bickett, who himself was a player on a state finals team back about 15 years ago. Meanwhile, over at uh, Prairie Central, they had an interesting win over the Illini Central, 45-34 in the super sectional to get here. They finished second back about 10 years ago with, of course, a much different group, David. You mentioned Brad Bickett. I actually was coaching at Northern Illinois when he was playing at Ohio. And my boss was the legendary John McDougal. Ah, yes. We went to see him play three or four times and considered recruiting him. Let's check in now with the public address announcer, Paul Herzog. March Madness, today's second quarterfinal game in Carver Arena features the Fairbury Perry Central Hawks, a record of 25 and 5. And the Manliest Bureau Valley Storm, a record of 24 and 5. Let's meet the teams and the coaches of this quarterfinal contest. The non-starters for Fairbury Prairie Central. 6'1", senior number four, Kyle Stork. The six-foot junior, number 10, Nathan Hobb. The 5'10", junior number 12, Jason Myers. The 6'1", senior number 15, Brent Weeks. The six-foot senior, number 20, Jenny Bull. 5'8", junior, number 21, Landon Young. A 6'4", freshman, number 35, C.J. Reedy. A 5'9", junior, 33, Jake McWhorter. A 5'10", junior, number 40, Nick Winninger. And 
And a 6'4", junior number 42, Mark Wabel. And now the non-starters for the storm of Manless Bureau Valley. Six-foot junior, number 10, Chad Deaver. Five-nine senior, number 12, Jamie Durham. Five-eleven junior, number 14, Matt Hewitt. Six-foot senior, number 30, Timothy Eckberg. Six-one senior, number 34, Matt Tumbleson. Six-one senior, number 40, Ryan Litherland. A 6'2 senior, 42, Chris Feward. A 6'1 senior, 44, Eric Wiggum. A 6'2 junior, number 50, Mike Jacobs. And a 6'5 junior, number 52, Mike Barrett. And now the starting lineups. And a forward for Prairie Central. A 6'0 junior, number 23, Casey. Hammond. And a forward from Bureau Valley, a 6'2 senior, number 22, Justin Yepsen. The other forward for the Hawks, a 6'3 senior, number 30, Eric Curtinbaugh. The other forward for the Storm, a 6'2 sophomore, 32, Phil Endress. At center for Perry Central, 6'1", junior, 34, Chris Kinnett. At center for Bureau Valley, a 6'5", junior, number four, Ruben Slot. At a guard for Perry Central, a 6'1", senior, number three, Sean McGuire. At a guard for Bureau Valley, a 6'1", junior, number 20, John Elliott. The other guard for the Hawks, a 5'10", senior, number 22, Derek Stevens. The other guard for the Storm, a 5'8", senior, number 24, Adam Endress. The assistant coaches are very... While you're looking at the huddles here, we'll show you the coaches. There is the veteran Tom Posey, 17 years a coach, nine over at Prairie Central. And there is quite a record, winning nearly 80% of his games. And a comparative youngster over on the other side, Brad Bickett, but he's coached for 10 years, of course, the last five at uh, Bureau Valley. And this is his first trip to the state finals. Ron Kuhlman is the referee. The other officials, Bruce Jokic and Dan Grimm. Ron Kuhlman on the right, Jokic in the middle, and Grimm on the left. A veteran crew. And we are just about set to go here. As you look at Brad Bickett's Euro Valley's Storm. You heard him say rebound. They have a big advantage there, led by Ruben Slomak at 6-5. Nobody. The Prairie Central is uh, taller than 6'2", although they list Curtinbaugh at 6'3". That's uh, pretty generous. The light blue is Bureau Valley. The Hawks of Prairie Central in the dark blue. So this will be a challenge for everybody, David. Absolutely. Lots of blue out there. Ruben Slock is really fired up. I watched him go through a boxing routine during the starting lineups with one of his teammates. He is jacked. You'll be happy to know, moms, no one was injured. This is McGuire. You'll see the ball in his hands most of the time. Both teams with an aggressive, usually an aggressive man-to-man, -man, although he sometimes will go into the 1-3-1 one, one zone. Opening minute here, they get it down inside to Kennett. Kennett doesn't like to shoot necessarily. Hammond does. Out of 
the trap on the low post, the double. They were able to pass the ball out top, and he made a real nice penetration move and used the glass to score. Immediate full court defensive pressure from the Hawks of Prairie Central. Bureau Valley now on the offense for the first time. Ball kicked out of bounds. They'll set up Adam Endress as the point guard. And there you look at John Elliott, the other guard, is really the off guard. And brother Phil, who is younger and bigger, is their starting forward. Elliott. Now once again, the Hawks of Prairie Central on the rebound, a controlled pass break. Looks inside and stuffed beautifully by Slot. That is great rotation down by Slock. And this is Slock from three. Well, you got to know that's a highlight. Ruben Slock at both ends of the floor. Maybe that boxing routine got him going, David. Now look at him. His uniform is soaking wet. We are a minute and a half in. He was fired up in warm-ups. And again, a turnover. Bureau Valley, the storm. Up the floor again. Slock again. This time has a partially blocked by curtain ball not a good look he was contested the whole way mcguire looking to dump off curtain ball brad bickett holding up a fist for a set play the interesting thing brad bickett said i never even had a goal of getting a, as a coach to the state tournament all i want are my kids to love the game left-handed attempt by adam endris no good Wrong one from Derek Stevens, and we get a foul on the rebound. It will go. Against Prairie Central. It's an interesting philosophy. He said, we didn't have this goal. And when he goes, when I started coaching, I didn't think I gotta get to the Elite Eight or win a state title. He said, I just teach passion yeah. and love for the game. And he's right, anything you do in life, if you do it with a passion and you love it, you'll be good at it. What a great attitude. Meanwhile, here he is in the state final. And a quick stop and pop by Epson, no good. Offensive rebound. That's Elliott. Adam Endress. On the big board underneath by Kennett. Set up. Bureau Valley, 3 2 lead. Prairie Central with the ball. Almost taken away inside as McGuire tried to force it in. And here's McGuire. And Sean McGuire, averaging just over 15, gets his first bucket. Puts his team up one. The trapping pressure here. Nice Good look pass. underneath. And a beautiful lay-in by Elliott. That is exactly how you beat pressure. You take the ball via the pass, not the dribble. You take it hard to the basket to score. Great opportunity. Bureau Valley by one. Coming up to the four-minute mark here in quarter number one. Shot is short by Hammond. Rebound Elliott. And here is Adam Endress, three-year starter at point guard. And here is Slock, still sweating. And this time, curtain ball got a piece. Eric curtain ball at 6-3. Commits the foul, his first. And here is Slock from the line, 66%. He's got four. Team has six. Nathan Hobb comes in for the Hawks of Prairie Central. Oh, the six-foot guard. Here's the second from Smart. Seven for the lead for Bureau Valley. 4.08 to go first quarter. We'll take a timeout here. March Madness continues on Fox Sports Net. Stay tuned.
these days, it seems like everybody's always reachable, instantly accessible. Until there's a busy signal, a hold message, and the realization that your insurance company isn't there for you. Enter country companies, where you'll always talk to real people with real answers, real quick. After all, what good is a phone if there's no one there to listen? Thank you for your patience. Country Companies Insurance. The best taste for me is Pepsi when I'm cruising down the streets of the NYC. Me and my boys just shooting the breeze. On the streets of L.A., we sipping up Pepsi. Cause so the FFS is where they only call it for me. The joy of flavor. The joy of fun. The joy of all food. Hold on your tongue. The joy of all Y'all need a lift? Just about halfway through quarter number one, quarter final number two, and day one of the state elite eights. Mike Liederman along with Dave Kaplan, Steve Schlanger, Bureau Valley, 7-4 over Prairie Central here. And we saw some great fundamental basketball from the opening thing. We take a look at our Hyundai keys to victory, David. Well, party on. Enjoy the experience. Don't be overwhelmed by being in the Elite Eight field. Bureau Valley, a very new school, only five years. Depth of the field. It's a very talented group. Who will have the more help from their bench when we talk about depth? This is Hobb for Prairie Central. The Hawks down three. Curtain ball. Across the floor to McGuire. And a good rebound in among the trees for Adam Endress at 5'8". Adam, good look. And a nice touch, Justin Yepsen. He had 20 in the super sectional. He's got his first two today, a 6'2 senior. See, they do a very nice job, Bureau Valley, and that's because their head coach was a guard. He wants these guys to have the freedom. They don't look to just get the ball over and then set up. They look to score. And now they look to take it away. This time it was Jepsen for the steal. And the foul committed. As Endress got off the shot. And we get a blocking foul. Called against Nathan Hobb. That's his first. Not a shooting situation. Neither team in the bonus. Adam Endress to inbound. Try to get it in and once again forcing it, but Euro Valley controls. And a good baseline jump as Bill Andrus finally got into the act. Nice touch. He's got seven. The lead is six. Here come the Hawks. That's a 1 3 1. Look in the trap. Good luck inside. Great job to beat the pressure. Nick Bill Winnegar. With Ruben Slock out top in that pressing defense, his long arms make it difficult to get things going out top, so you go back door. Well, Phil Andrus, he liked it so much, he banged a three home. Look out, 16 to 9. The offense has taken over. Good look in pass by Nick Winnegar, who just come into the game for Prairie Central. Winninger number 40 in the high post right now. They look to him as a catalyst, and he certainly made something happen right away. And an offensive foul called on Casey Hammond. That's two on Hammond. What a great job out of Adam Endress. 5'8", 140 pounds. Soaking wet. He absolutely got level. Pops right back up, ready to go. That's a textbook way of playing defense and taking the charge. You hit the ground hard with your butt, you pop up, you're ready to go. Well, Hammond comes out with the two fouls. Good look underneath, and it'll go for Justin Yepsen and the foul. Again, very nice job by Bureau Valley. Rather than just throw the ball on top and set up, let's go right inside and see if we can score. They get contact, hoop harm, and a chance for three. There's your entry pass. And you know you got a size differential. There's your contact, throw it up. Good things happen with a soft touch, boom. First foul on Sean McGuire. Yepsen, 69% from the line. He's got five. 
great electricity in this building. It's tough to find an empty seat around here. It's about a 12,600 capacity, and they're every bit of 11.5 uh, here. And there's the takeaway. Adam Endress, the hands again over the slot. The big guy gets out and runs to give me the basketball. Ruben Slot, 6'5 and a half, but he's got very good ball skills. He can catch and score on the move. Curtain ball. Good look underneath with the left hand. Derek Stevens gets his first. The natural lefty gets his two. Nice job on the glass. That was a big basket. And right back comes the Epson. He's on a tear. He's got seven. Well, these teams play exciting style basketball. There is no walk it up and let's set it up and run a delay game. These two are looking to score. The Epson's got seven out of his team's last nine points. 23 to 11, Bureau Valley in the light blue. Prairie Central. Bob missing. And the rebound to Epson. They'll play for one shot here. This has been an incredibly action-packed first quarter. We still have about 30 seconds to go. Getting some movement out of their offense. It's a patterned offense here in the half court. Underneath to Phil Andrus. Final 10 seconds, quarter number one. Brad Pickett right in front of us giving instructions and the foul committed by Derek Stevens is first. Block and foul. Not in a penalty situation yet. So, like, if you watch this team play, talking about Bureau Valley. They're very disciplined in the half court. Yes, they, there's your contact, but they, they like to get out and run. We've seen how aggressive they attack the rim and how they break pressure to score. But in the half court, they're a very, very disciplined club with a pattern and a method to their madness offensively. It's not let's get the first available shot. It's get let's get the first good shot. Let's stand corrected. They are a 17 foul in the quarter, so there is a penalty. Oh. Even one, Adam Endress gets his first point of the afternoon. Good look at Tom Posey. 14-point lead. McGuire closing seconds. Winnegar. Well, we have enough action for a whole game, it seems, in that quarter. And most of it on the Bureau Valley end. 25 to 11, they lead it after one. If you really want to know Chicago from people who know Chicago, click here. Mix, Chicago's complete online entertainment guide. A community is more than just where you live. Together, we've got to lend a helping hand, learn something new, and give something back to those around us. When you get involved, even the smallest effort makes a big difference. Chicago is at its best when we all team up. Celtics tonight at 5.30 on Fox Sports Net. Bureau Valley with the lead in the lighter blue. Long three by Slock, and it goes over, and, well, 
Once it went over the top of the backboard, it was dead ball. He was looking to take that shot all the way. That's a little bit deep, although Coach does give him that type of freedom. Brad Bickett, he played in the finals versus Teton when he was at Ohio, and he loved to take the deep shot. The Ohio school had a total enrollment of 69 kids, right? Correct. The smallest school ever to make it to the state finals. They couldn't write the last chapter, but they did darn well. They came in second that year, 1986. I was there. Just back in the ball game. Three try from Hammond is no good, and the rebound followed up by Curtin Ball. A real nice job by Curtin Ball. That is a classic example of outworking somebody coming up with a rebound and getting a stick back. Elliott working all the way through. A nice play, John Elliott. Well, they score quick. Four points for Elliott, and it's a 12 point lead again for Bureau Valley. Here come the Hawks. Very central. Trying to work against that 1 3 1 zone trap. You see, he's on the point of it, the 6 5 slot. Lean in. No good by Hammond. A good rebound by Yepsen. Slock on the low block. Last touch by Prairie Central. 27-15. Just about two minutes gone by in the second quarter here. Euro Valley with the lead. That's Nathan Hobb again for Prairie Central. Checks back in. Here's Adam Andrus kicking it off. Last touch by whom? Last touch by Prairie Central. So it'll still be Storm Ball. Phil Andrus getting ready to check back in. And for the Storm. Jamie Durham, number 12, was in there briefly, comes out, did not score. Long three and wildly short from Phil Andrus. Not a good look. That was one of the shots we talked about, up-tempo with discipline. That was a lack of discipline there. He was contested. It was way too deep. Nick Ryle will always set that offense. His team down 12. From the corner, missing Stevens. Here comes Bureau Valley again, but stolen away by Stevens. They'll take this one from three. Good rebound underneath Hobb. And McGuire gets fouled as he gets the loose ball. Brad Pickett up, yelling at his team. It's just a lack of effort there. You cannot turn the basketball over the way that they did and then get out-rebounded inside. That's just not paying attention. You can't make that mental error. And then here, the ball comes after the three-point opportunity. Sean McGuire with four points, two for two from the line. 78% free throw shooter. Chris Kennett comes back in, the starting center, and Nick Winninger comes out for Prairie Central. McGuire has a half a dozen. It's a 10-point lead for Bureau Valley. They've led nearly the entire ball game. Adam Andrus working against pressure doesn't have a problem. Yepsen goes in on two men. Well, he does a really nice job at using his dribble just enough to get himself out of trouble, and then he made himself a pretty good look from about seven feet. Yepsen, considered to be the best leaper on that team, had a good look, worked inside there. This is Hobb. On the rebound, McGuire. Tries to look underneath for Hobb again, but steps. Looked like a little hop, skipping a jump in there. And it looks like a timeout coming now. 4.56. Official timeout. Euro Valley with a 12-point lead. Prairie Central in quarterfinals of the state. A championship. 
We have liftoff. The Russian rocket Pavel Bure hosts Tony Amati and the Hawks. Blackhawks, Panthers, tomorrow at 6 on Fox Sports Net. I run a rental car company, and we have 14 Hyundai accents. Customers are always telling me how much they love the accents. So I test drove one and I bought it. Their 10 year and 5 year warranty definitely shows you what kind of confidence Hyundai has in their vehicles. So I went into the dealership, treated me right, gave me a great deal, walked out of there happy man. Freedom to me means to be able to go wherever you want without any problems. The Hyundai Accent comes with the freedom of America's best warranty for only $8,934. Want to share my joy? <laughs> joy cola, Pepsi cola. Yo, Mary, wait up! Euro Valley by 12 over Prairie Central. Don't forget tonight our Class A coverage continues with the other two quarterfinals. We'll have them for you this evening. We'll have Bishop McNamara against Pleasant Plains, followed by defending champion Rock Falls taking on Riverton. All the action on Fox Sportsnet Plus this evening. Right now, field goal percentage Bureau Valley has cooled off, believe it or not. They were shooting over 60% at the end of the first quarter. As you can see, Prairie Central's got to get going, shooting better than 33%. Not going to get it done. Adam Endress, check it. That was Elliott. Missing long. Saved nicely by Yepsen. And a good non-call as McGuire fell over the faking Yepsen and the held ball, it'll go over to Prairie Central. Brad Pickett not happy without a, a foul call there, but the official just turned and said something back. Well, you make the call. There's the save. But I don't know how you don't call one there. Let's change that from a good non-call to a non-call. Anyway, Prairie Central on the attack. They trail it by 12. Here's McGuire. Bob around the perimeter. McGuire, good move. Can't finish. And rebound to Yepsen again. He's their leading rebounder. Here's Slock, one on two. Not a problem. That was beautiful. Euro Valley looks, and they look down the floor. They pass, 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 and they let Slock finish the play. That is what you want to do when you want to play up-tempo. You don't look to hand it off. You move the ball down the floor via the pass. And you know what's driving Prairie Central nuts. Nice job by Prairie Central to recognize the open man. And just that quick, Yepsen comes back off the feed from Adam Andrews. We've got a shootout here, Mike. At least on one side, 33-21. What do we have 98, uh, 88 points the whole first game, right? We might make with that with an overtime. Yeah. <laughs> Once again, Hammond corkscrews around, and there's Yepsen. Still another rebound. Got him for at least half a dozen. Two and a half to go, first half. Adam Hendricks just throws one. <laughs> Well, okay. That'll make our halftime highlight reel. That one just flip it up and hope for the best. Adam saying I had it all the way at 5-8. Sure. And a whistle off the ball. Looks like curtain ball was fouled by Phil Andrus. Or the other way around. Hope we're gonna get an illegal push. Look at that shot. How do you get that to go? You know the coach is going to be thinking in his head, what is he did? Great shot. Yeah, nice that's job. it. I remember that. And he didn't call glass, so he didn't have to do it that way. There's timeout on the floor. 35-21, Bureau Valley, a two-touchdown lead here. And Bureau Valley is showing uh, every bit of an up-tempo style. Well, you look at the huddle for Bureau Valley. 
Brad Pickett, kind of young to have 10 years of coaching experience under his belt. Well, look at the picture I've got here in the program. There is a, sorry coach, thinner version of Brad Pickett against Kevin Ruhal of Tutopolis in the 1986 title game. We'll show you that at halftime at some point. Meanwhile, for all you need to know about the IHSA, you log on to www.ihsa.org. Scores, stats, more. Let me tell you something. Scott Johnson and the gang over there have put together an incredible website. All kinds of information about sports, teams, records. It's all there for you. Storm cheerleaders, they're right there for you. Meanwhile, the Storm is on the march, up by 14, and headed for the line. Phil Andrus will shoot. He was the pushy back at the other end of the floor. Six points for Phil. If you look at the two of them, Phil and Adam together, I mean, they certainly look like Mutt and Jeff. Phil at 6'3", Adam at 5'8". A lot of people don't wonder if they're even brothers. Now we got a foul underneath. Lock was in the area. I think they're going to get Justin. Now they got Yepsen for it. Yepsen for the foul. Yepsen averaging about eight rebounds a game. A little overzealous here for this one. Now watch the contact from behind. Do not put your hands in the middle of the back. Not a ton of contact, but you put your hands on the, uh, the rebounder, you're going to get caught. First foul on Yepsen. 36-21, biggest lead of the ball game for Bureau Valley, Prairie Central, McGuire. Real good job of ball reversal or swinging the ball side to side. Slot causes you a lot of problems to initiate your offense with him at the point of that zone. He did a very good job to get an open look. That's the lead to 12. Good look inside, Yepsen. Didn't walk somehow. Jensen couldn't believe how open he was when he made that spin to the right. Curtain ball there. They've done a good job bottling him up. Well, they've doubled that side. They've done a really nice job. They're so very, very active. Winnegar missing. I'm a huge proponent of man-to-man -man defense, but let me tell you, the way Bureau Valley is playing this zone right now, it's very tough to score on. I think it's a great move when you got a guy 6'5 who can play off top like Slot can, makes it very difficult to initiate your offense. Hob almost making the steal. Adam Endress able to clear the 10-second line. Under a minute to go, first half. 38-24, 14-point lead for the team with the ball, Bureau Valley. Here's Yepsen. Elliott, four points on the afternoon. As the storm works, or work, for one shot. Trying to look in for Slock. Tipped away, but it'll stay in the hands of Bureau Valley. Nice play by Hobb. Good hustle. Real good hustle. Coming up at halftime, Steve Schlanger is going to be there with uh, Larry Wilcoxon. He's a longtime IHSA official. We'll talk to him. We'll show you some highlights, lots of statistics, all sorts of good things. As our March Madness weekend continues, final 10 seconds. Phil Endress, slot the rebound, saves it, yes. That was a heck of a hustle play. Found somebody to fire the ball off of, and they'll get one more scoring opportunity with 2.1 left. And coming in is Derek Stevens. Got a couple of fouls on him. The Prairie Central, Bureau Valley, Yepsen. Well, he was able to spot it up. Meanwhile, quite a half for Bureau Valley. 38-24 as they go to the locker room. Steve Slanger has got 
Coach Brad Beckett. Steve, it's all yours. I know that coaches in general always have criticisms, but not much to be displeased about in those first two quarters. No, I tell you, our kids are really playing with some poise and confidence. Uh, they're running our half-court trap real well. We're getting back when we're switching defense, playing some decent man. We're sharing the basketball. I'm very pleased. It's a terrific atmosphere, but how do you strike that balance between allowing the guys to relax enough to enjoy it, but also keep focused on the job at hand? Well, basically, these kids have been... 2000 Hyundai Elantra for only 12234 well, what'll it be, sweetheart? Let me guess. A nice, cold Pepsi. I wouldn't want to hear one of those crazy voices of yours, huh? Honey, you ain't heard nothing yet. Hit it, fellas. Bureau Valley 38, Prairie Central, the Hawks 24. Bureau Valley, the Storm making the most of their first appearance here in the Elite Eight. A school, as we told you, only five years old, Cappy. They've done it, done it well, and they're really firing on all cylinders, shooting nearly 60% from the field. Let's take a look at the highlights. Well, they got the things rolling very well with their fast break. They always look down the floor, and they always look for the open man here. Real nice job. Down on the baseline, Phil Endress knocks down the jump shot. Derek Stevens trying to keep his Prairie Central Hawks in the ball game. Nice job inside, outworking everybody on the glass. Then here is classic Bureau Valley basketball. They do a wonderful job in transition. They look down the floor with every opportunity and find their main guy. Ruben Slock, pull up, use the window, get the hoop. Adam Entrance with the wild, crazy, throw it up, and hope it goes in, and then. Sean McGuire from way downtown. Ooh. They've got to get more help from Sean McGuire. Ferry Central's going to make a game of this. The leading score, as you see, uh, for uh, Bureau Valley. 13 points for Justin Yepsen. That should be. Slock with 11. And Phil Endress with half a dozen. Hammond and McGuire each with nine for Prairie Central. Then things drop off. Also, Adam Endress, six. Never told anybody, so I'll tell you. Going deep. With Chris Meyer. Sundays at 9 on Fox Sports Net. Blackhawks, Panthers, tomorrow at 6 on Fox Sports Net. Looking at the statistics for quarterfinal game two, no secret why Bureau Valley's doing so well. They have the edge just about everywhere. Neither team shooting well from three-point land, but they're shooting 56% are the storm from the field in general. And look at the inside points, David. Well, you take a look at Ruben Slock. He's one of the main reasons. He had 11 in the first half, also had a block shot, played all 16 minutes, three of five from the floor. Young man is very, very good offensively, but he's been a big factor defensively up top in that zone that they've been running, Bureau Valley. Slock, a three-year starter. Bureau Valley with the ball. This is Slock up top against the man for man. Good rebound, McGuire underneath. Sean McGuire leading the break. Nice look underneath. Derek Stevens couldn't finish, but he gets fouled. Good look. Sean McGuire really showing point guard underneath there. Had to run a break. Justin Yepsen the foul. That's two. Well, Adam Endress hit the floor hard again. Didn't look like it was an offensive foul, though. He hit the floor hard, but it looked as though maybe it was just a little bit less contact than the last time. The other one he took, he just got pounded. Derek Stevens, 75% from the line. First trip today. Three points for Stevens, who averages just under eight for the Hawks. 5'10 senior. Nice steal underneath, but Hammond couldn't hold it. Here come the storm again. Adam Endress looks underneath. Good passing. Slot goes down, gets hammered, but a beautiful pass underneath from Yepsen, and it all started with the point guard, Adam Endress. Now, this is a team that is extremely unselfish. You love to see teams always look for the better opportunity. Nice pass, nice pass. And here comes the contact, and there's the foul. Kennett on the foul, his first. Got his money worth, money's worth on that one. Here is Slot with 11. Four for four from the line. That's his first miss. 
Tutopoulos, an overtime winner over Nashville. Game one will have games three and four coming up tonight on Fox Sportsnet Plus. And of course, the semifinals and the finals tomorrow. That characteristic couple of misses for Ruben Slot. Down 13, McGuire. Nice move. Hesitation with the dribble, saw the daylight, took it like a tailback into the hole and got it up and scored it. And immediately timeout is called. Brad Pickett wants a 20. Tom Posey's team making some adjustments at halftime and coming out. Cutting the lead to 11. And there is Posey. Again, he's had a 17-year coaching career first at Crescent Iroquois, then has come over to Prairie Central for the last nine. As you watch McGuire here. Real nice job by McGuire. He saw the opening, the daylight, the defender. No one stepped up, took away penetration. He took it right to the rim. You know, Coach Posey was a great shooter with awesome range in his day. Talking to a couple guys down there, they said if there was a three-point line, that guy would have averaged big numbers. He used to put his hands right on the laces when he shot. <laughs> I didn't say it, Coach. Mike Lederman did. Here's Phil Andrus. Rebound underneath Yepsen. Crash the glass. Good things happen. Nice job. Yepsen inside. He's been a real factor on the boards today. Now, I can kid Tom Posey because I'm older than he is. I remember the center jump. No, forget that. Here's McGuire. 13-point deficit to make up. Kennett just Kennett! barreling in in the foul. Well, there's nothing subtle about Chris Kennett, and he doesn't score much. But there, it's as though he had a mandate. There he comes again. Nobody steps up. They allow that seam in the defense. Boy, is he fired up. Look how no one steps up. No one takes that away. Not a lot of contact, but enough that they're going to get the call, the hoop and the harm, and the three-point opportunity. Justin Yepsen, his third foul, he comes out. All kinds of flying around for the rebound, and Kenneth's right in the middle of it with Phil Andrus. I bet you Kenneth is one hell of a football player. This young man is as fired up and as physical out there. He's all over the place. Well, you know, obviously, Tom Posey said somebody's got to light a spark on this team. Nice job to maintain the dribble. Mike Barron's number 52 under the boards there for Bureau Valley. A little hesitation causes the turnover for the Storm. Here comes McGuire trying to cut the lead now to single digits. He wants to take it. Nice look underneath, and the feet to curtain ball. Great pass by Kinnett. Last couple minutes, he's been the spark. He's been the guy, and we've got to turn over here. Here's curtain ball with it. Six in a row. McGuire. But will he? Yes, he will go to the line. McGuire calling the fans to get going. We got to see the section here now. Very central. They were quiet in the first half. Barron's the foul is first. Just found the back rim, but Mike Barron's the 6'5 junior who just came into the game, committed the foul. Meanwhile, we've got a look at the fire on the floor. Talking yeah. to his crowd. Get up, let's go. Well, this team is now giving the fans a reason. Down by 15 at one point. Still got a bit of a hill here, down nine. But of course, the first game, Cappy, we saw Tutopolis come back. Totally different ball game in the first one. Dave Bennett and I sat, do we talk during the break? How it's dangerous to put the ball in the deep freeze. Nashville knew that they were not as talented a ball club as Tutopolis, and eventually, deep down one out. Here, it's two teams that are matching big time offense. Well, if you want to get all the news about sports in Chicagoland, you better believe it. The game room, nightly at 7 o'clock or before the game. We've got a half hour of your favorite teams and sports figures. If you love Chicago sports, you'll love the game room. Tune in at 7 or before the game here on Fox Sportsnet. Along with David Kaplan, Steve Schlanger, I'm Mike Lederman. We're seeing a 
microcosm. They just flipped the first half. Now exactly what we saw at a Bureau Valley in half number one, we're seeing out of Prairie Central. Look down the floor and run to break the score. Very nicely done. Stevens, the last basket, an 11-2 Prairie Central run has cut the lead to five with barely two and a half minutes gone here in quarter number three. over to brother Phil, look down inside. And the call last touched by Prairie Central. Bureau Valley only four points the last four minutes. They will inbound. Adam Andrews through again. Well, he made one like that in the first half. Down goes Curtinbaugh. And the foul will be on Derek Stevens. We've got him for three. This is the toughest call in basketball. Tough to tell. Charge block, toughest call in the game. Before the shot, so no free throws. Stevens comes out. Nathan Hopp, number 10, comes in. Look to be a defender, might have been central. And Phil Andrus with a big, big three. Very nicely done because he got himself set to shoot as the pass was in the air. That's what really good shooters do. They get ready to load up. Feet are set, shoulders over toes, and he drilled it. The sophomore and here coming back is Casey Hammond. Hammond now with 11. Yes, it. They look down inside, and Hammond just got hammers. Yep, <laughs> he did. He was the hammerer. Wow, there was contact in there. Who says this isn't a physical game? Well, these teams have really been going at it ever since Kenneth decided he's got to sort of start a little rumble here. As Winnegar comes in, here's a good look at Casey Hammond. He's Pretty stocky guy, too. Let's watch it here. Here's Hammond's shot. And we'll be back. Now this is March Madness. The Bulls charge into Beantown for a shootout with Paul Pierce and the Celtics. Bulls, Celtics, tonight at 5.30 on Fox Sports Net. I work in an operating room, and sometimes it gets pretty hectic. My wife and I are expecting our first child. The last thing I need to worry about is my car. My Elantra comes with a 10-year powertrain warranty. I can rely on it. There are no worries. Get the car Consumer's Digest named a Best Buy with air and power package. Freedom's getting behind the wheel of the car, putting the key in the ignition and going. Get the 2000 Hyundai Elantra for only $12,234. Today, the Blackhawks sent Doug Gilmore and J.P. Dumont to the Buffalo Savers in exchange for 24-year-old left winger Michael Groshek. We will have more on this trade tonight in the game room at 5.30 and then tomorrow night prior to the Blackhawks-Panthers game. Well, it's only a six-point lead for Bureau Valley as Perry Central has outscored them 13-5 to five so far this quarter that cut a 15-point lead again down to seven. Oh, it's cheerleaders. Having something to cheer about. As Prairie Central has come in and really mixed it up, Bureau Valley caught a little bit back on their heels after halftime. I thought Prairie Central has stepped up their defense here in the second half. That's what's gotten them back in the game. Things haven't been as easy for the storm of Bureau Valley to run their offense. They set a double screen for Phil Endress. And Winnegar. Pokes the ball away, but picks up the foul. First on Nick. <laughs> Elliott looks it inside. Tough pass. Yepsen comes away with it. He's got three fouls. Nice look underneath, and we get a foul inside. As Hammond commits his fourth. Hey, 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 hey. 
There's the pass. Going to come inside here. Real good job as Slot cuts to the basket. There's the foul. Well, they gave it to Winnegar instead of Hammond, so Hammond still has three. Great break. It's very simple. Slot who missed his last two from the line. Makes the top end of the one and one. He's got a dozen. Brad Pickett. We'll see if we can show you that picture of him back a few uh, a few years in one goatee ago when he was a senior in high school in the state championship finals. Seven point lead. Prairie Central trailing with the ball. Coming up to the halfway point of quarter number three. This zone has been very effective. It's lock on top, 1-3-1. They trap the wings. Look at him out there, 6-5. Winnegar from the corner. Wow, he's got three. Good job, Prairie Central. Move the basketball, force the defense to shift, and that weakness is down on the baseline. They talk about Winnegar being a catalyst. There's a perfect example. Comes off the bench, plays starters minutes. Here's Phil Andrus answering. Open look, very nicely done. The best way to an open look on the perimeter is through the post. The defense collapses, kick it back out. Took some air out of Prairie Central with that big three by the sophomore. That's three threes for Phil Andrews. They get it into the high post curtain ball over two players. Rebound Winnegar and a foul as Hammond goes up. It will go against Bureau Valley. Good job on the glass again. The smaller club finds a way to get the job done on the board. There's a tough contested shot, probably a bit ill-advised, but there's the effort inside, the rebound and the foul. Adam Endress commits it, number one on him. Nice touch for Casey Hammond. He shoots 82%. He's got a dozen today. Just about his average. Yepsen, rebound number seven. Under three minutes to go. It's a six-point lead on the ball for Bureau Valley. Slot's been quiet from the field for a long time. Uh, Phil missed that one. Phil on this. Renegar, who hit from there a moment ago. Now that's the weakness of the zone. If you move the ball quick enough, you can get a look from a corner. Hammond! Of the rebound. It's Slot. And Slot will have foul number two called on him. Having a good play here. Really only six feet going against the 6-5 Slot. Well, when you get hooked up with an arm, it's good. John Elliott loaded that thing up. It's amazing. The Bureau Valley shooters all get their feet set as that pass is en route to them, and they know they've got to look. from three, and it'll go on the foul. Chance for a four-point play here. No, no, I think they're going to call the foul on, Bureau, on the Prairie Central, but they're going to count the, the basket. basket. Okay, let's wait. We'll be Kurt Vaughn underneath pushing off. Now let's watch. See how he's ready? His arms are set to catch the ball. Boom! Shot's gone. Now at the other end, there's the look again for the corner, like we've been talking about. You're going to get that against this zone. Now, I think the official was waving off the shot. Uh, one official signaled it good. And the scoreboard says 50-45. Well, if you watch on the baseline, I think the one official, as the ball's in the air, is waving off the shot. But then they ended up counting it. And at the other end... We'll try and get it for you. Yeah. After. 
we Andrus. get a stoppage. Andrus misses on the one and one. Final minute here of quarter number three, five point. Bureau Valley V, Perry Central with the four point. They are spreading the floor. And they've got Kinnett up on a high post. Just banging. They brought in Mike Behrens at 6'5 to deal with Kennett. Kennett is a little shorter, but a lot wider. And underneath they look for Stevens, and there's a foul. All right, now let's look at the other play. Here's the shot from the corner. Now watch the official on the baseline. There's the pass to the corner. Now you see the official looks like he's waving off the shot. They end up counting it. Jamie Durham for Bureau Valley came in and just in time to pick up a foul. We had another official apparently overrule and said yes, the shot counts. Stevens missing a big one and one. for one shot. McGuire putting the pressure on for Prairie Central. Brad Pickett right in front of us signaling the play. And we get a blocking foul against Winnegar of Prairie Central. There's Nate. Three on him and it will send Adam Endress to the line where he's missed a couple today. Coming in again is Casey Hammond, and Kinnett comes out with two points and a lot of welts on the light blue team. Good luck underneath, and the follow beautifully done by Barons. Mike Barron, really good job. He saw that ball coming short, was set, grabbed it, scored it. And look at that. Buzzer. That is a huge momentum shot. A deep, deep three at the gun. Casey Hammond fired that from 30 feet. Nothing but the bottom of the net. You can see just as the ball is going into the net, the red light comes on. Well, 25 feet anyway. Tom Posey, his team hasn't been this close in a while. Four-point lead with a quarter to go. These days, it seems like everybody's always reachable, instantly accessible, until there's a busy signal, a hold message, and the realization that your insurance company isn't there for you. Enter country companies, where you'll always talk to real people with real answers real quick. After all, what good is a phone if there's no one there to listen? Thank you for your patience. Country Companies Insurance. I'm Jim Corno, Senior Vice President and General Manager of Fox Sports Net Chicago. This year, our sports awards dinner raised over $210,000 benefiting the March of Dimes. This money will go to support the battle against birth defects. On behalf of all of us here at Fox Sports Net, I'd like to thank everyone who supported the dinner and encourage you to support the March of Dimes all year long. Celtics tonight at 5.30 on Fox Sports Net. Well, a Taco Bell game summary. Bureau Valley still shooting up there at 54%, but Prairie Central coming on strong. And look what they did in the third quarter. Eight out of 11, including five from three-point range. Each team had five threes in that quarter. So here we go. Start of the fourth. Prairie Central down by four. They were down as much as 15. There's Hammond, number 23, giving the ball over to McGuire, and McGuire will work against the man-to-man. -man. Hobb. Nathan Hobb with the steal.
first basket couldn't have been a bigger one for Prairie Central. It's a two-point ball game. And turning the ball over in the lane, Elliott got stepped on. I think he got whacked on the thumb. Now we're going to get a foul called against Prairie Central against Hammond. And that for Hammond is four. Coach Posey was saying the other day that they lost last year in the regional. That was a huge motivational factor for this season. Since we won the regional year after year, I think seven in a row. Stevens looks underneath. Winninger had Jepson to deal with. Here's McGuire from three. Wow, ring it up. Slot right in his face. That was a real nice pass by Winninger back outside. And now we've got a turnover. Inbounds violation as Slot stepped on the line, getting the ball inbounds. Tom Posey, very composed as Phil Andrews comes back into the ball game. Barron's comes out with two points. Well, that three, McGuire did a very good job of getting his feet set. Whitaker threw it out, and McGuire said, should I take it? Okay, very good. One point ball game. Looking for the lead. Curtain ball. High. Nice look underneath. Whitaker for two, but the hob assist was what made it. Very good pass inside. They've come roaring back all the way. They've got the lead and the emotion. 6.22 to go, fourth quarter. Prairie Central once 15 points down, is now ahead. 55-54, we'll show you the dish and the lay-in right here. Here comes McGuire, hangs in the air. Well, that was Hobb, and then here he comes. Look at that pass, great dish. The defense is all ready to collapse on him. They think he's going to take the shot in the lane, and he makes the move inside, makes the pass. There's McGuire from way downtown. McGuire at 6-1, Slock in his face at 6-5. That was cold. That was cold. Prairie Central holding on to a lead. Six minutes, 22 seconds to go, fourth quarter. Game number two here of the quarterfinals. To top list in overtime, a winner over Nashville. And tonight we'll have the third and fourth quarterfinals, semifinals, the third place game, and the final all tomorrow. Live from Carver Arena here in Peoria. David Kaplan, Mike Lederman, Steve Schlanger. And here's Brad Pickett. Look at him. There he is now. Let's take a look at him in 1986. He's the guy in the back playing defense against Tutopolis. He was playing for Ohio. Smallest school ever make the final. Now, he is. he's fallen behind by one here. His team with the ball. Clock at 6.15 and counting. Bill Andrus. Spot up once again. What a good look. John Elliott, his second three. He's got 12. John Elliott is a six foot, and that's generous. Yeah. 140 pounds, and that may be generous. And he really does a nice job at getting up into his shot, using his legs and following through. One three one trap again. They've got Hobb up top, and they've got McGuire running a baseline. And they've spread their offense. Big difference from the first half. Let's skip over the top. Timeout call by Tom Posey. Good call. Real good call. He didn't like what he saw out there. McGuire wanted the shot, and he got popped in the mouth as he ran the baseline. Coach Posey thought, you know what, 524, I don't want to look back a year from now watching this tape and say, why didn't I take a timeout there? Really good, solid coaching decision. Prairie Central has been in four tournaments before. They have never won. Finished third in 89, second the year after. And Tom Posey's taken two teams down to the Elite Eight. This is his third. Now, this is very central in their half-court offense. They want to get McGuire a shot. 
And here's how they try and shift the defense. They come back to McGuire, and he's not got anything there. And Tom Posey says, hey, I'm not going to take a chance. I'm forcing something here. Really good veteran coaching decision. Hobb has come in to study the point as a junior, freeing up McGuire. You have to take the ball, as you see Coach Posey, down to the corner and then swing it back around to the other side. But it's got to be quick. It's not via the dribble. It's via the pass. That's how you make a defense shift. And against the zone, especially a 1-3-1, that baseline's going to be open. In addition, you really have to take the ball at the seam of a defense and then kick it back out to a shooter. That's where McGuire comes in. McGuire averaging 15 a game. has got 17 so far. His team with the ball trailing by two. Winnegar's another guy I'd watch. Everyone will be waiting for McGuire. Winnegar's a guy that can step out and shoot the basketball. He's at the high post right now. And curtain ball's low. Now they drop him down. Open his hop. Back down and three. Real good job. Swing the ball one side to the other. They come all the way back in front of the bench. He got an open look at Perry. Nathan Hobb with five. Hobb coming back from a broken left foot earlier in the season. One point lead for Prairie Central. Yepsen can't hold on. Four minutes, 38 seconds to go. We've got timeout on the floor. A turnover for Prairie Central will have the ball. And look at Hobb from three. You don't do what I do for a living, unless you want to be heard. How's that? Louder! So I banged up my truck, right? I called my insurance company. Did anybody hear me? Nope. Out to lunch. The one time I need them, where are they? Better to call country companies, where you'll always talk to real people with real answers, real quick. Somebody there to listen. That's all I want. Country Companies Insurance. If you really want to know Chicago from people who know Chicago, click here. Chicago's complete online entertainment guide. March Madness in full swing. A game that looked to be a runaway for Bureau Valley has had a 16-point swing. Prairie Central now ahead. They'll have the ball. There is a big reason why Prairie Central's done so well. Sean McGuire has got eight points here in the second half. 17 for the game. That is he with the ball. Look at the turnovers this half as McGuire goes through and missed the layup. Well, he was able to get himself all the way to the rim, just couldn't complete the play. He's been able to penetrate much of the day. Inside, Yepsen. Couldn't get the roll, the rebound, curtain ball. Yepsen's been quiet, too. He had 13 in the first half, only two here in the second so far. What a great ball game. We've had two so far that have been terrific. Four minutes exactly left to go, fourth quarter. From three, not this time for Hammond. Slot, tough rebound. Nice job to protect the ball. Now we get a push. And the foul's gonna go as Hobb went down. And they're gonna call it on John Elliott. Hobb able to draw the charge away from the ball. Second foul on Elliott. Well, there's a clutch, clutch play right there for Hobb. Ah, watch it. I did not get to see. Oh, he just came down and whacked it. He just ran into him. Good call. Official right on top of it. Hobb's uh, first trip to the line. We told you, as a team, they averaged 73% from the line. So if we're getting into crunch time, they've got to give an edge to Prairie Central. Their lead is now two. Nice uh, 
soft touch. Biggest lead of the game for Prairie Central. Bureau Valley. Setting up the double screen. Adam Endress has it blocked by Hobbs as he went through. Too much one-on-one -on -one there. Got to touch the ball, get everybody involved, see if you can get a good look at shot, move the defense. Everyone stood around and watched one guy go one-on-one. -on -one. That's the one thing Brad Pickett worries about. If this team starts to go too much isolation, too much one-on-one, -on -one, and it starts with the point guard. McGuire. Working on Phil Endress here. Now they come out in the trap. Underneath, missing the layup is Curtin Ball. Prairie Central shooting an incredible 75% from the field this half. That's a shot you've got to make. Gather yourself, either get, get the basket or let him follow you. Slot for three. And it up, Ruben Slot. He's the leading scorer. He's the go-to guy. And they've done a very good job bottling him up here in the second half. Open look, and he made the most of it. Two and a half to go. Tied at 60. Well, if you think Slock was sweating before, he likes it there. Tracy Hammond, 18 points. Mike, we can't harp on it enough. Against this zone, you've got to be aware of the corner. If Bureau Valley's done a poor job all afternoon, that's what Perry Central's gotten back in the game. And Adam Endress again going through, saw the opening. This time, he draws the foul. On Kuhlman, the official, makes the call. We'll go against Kurt Vaughn. That'll be four on Arrow. There's Slock against the man-to-man, -man, steps up, nobody re rotates, and he makes the shot. At the other end, against that zone, the baseline in the corner is wide open. You have to be aware of it. Prairie Central's done a great job recognizing that. Bureau Valley has not made an adjustment to that defensively. Your guys on the floor have to step up and get me quicker to the corner. Slock over Winninger for the big rebound. Endress has missed three of four free throws. Adam Endress here. Slock from three again with the arch. Phil Endress trying to save it and steps on the line. Brad Bickett talking to Slock. He's telling him, give the head and shoulder fake. You don't have to arch the shot so much. Fake, let the defender fly by, and then take your shot or take it to the hoop. Two-point game, Prairie Central, the lead in the ball. And coming through to try to make the steal is Epson. Now we get a timeout on the floor. One minute, 49 seconds to go. Brad Bickett's got his team to talk to. Tom Posey called the 20. Talking to his Prairie Central team. And the Hawks lead it by two. Well, if you're looking for the best coverage of high school athletic events, look no further than Chicago Tribune's Preps Plus. Each week, Eric Collins.